This documentary is about the reconstruction of Fort Dobbs, originally built in 1756 on the western frontier during the French and Indian War. This new fort was built with local logs on a foundation designed to make the fort last for many years. For more than 50 years, the project has been talked about with no progress. The art of getting a project like this done, of this complexity, is the timely coordination of assets that become available from totally unexpected sources and the flexibility to make use of constructability improvements during the construction process. This is one way of saying we took advantage of things that came our way to get the job done. The company of soldiers, of North Carolina provincial soldiers, uh, are responsible for the construction of the fort, arrive in this area by the summer of 1755. Uh, they've been sent out here by the royal governor, Arthur Dobbs, to scout this countryside. We know they go as far as the mountains. And so certainly over that winter of 1755 to 56, uh, a lot of the major work of the fort is taking place. These soldiers, some of them may have had construction experience, but as we see with a lot of other forts, they may well have hired civilian master carpenters or uh, stone masons to help guide them in their efforts. But the soldiers themselves, are going to be sort of the muscle power of the workforce. We believe the hilltop here was fairly devoid of tree cover. A lot of this region was grassland at the time, but there were stands of large timber not too far away down along the stream bottoms. So we can imagine easily teams of soldiers bringing draft horses or oxen down to the creeks. They're harvesting timber there, probably chopping the limbs off the trees, all just using axes and saws and then dragging those logs with those animal teams up the hill and actually putting them into place on the floor. As far as we can tell, it was uh, just over a year-long process for the original Fort Dobbs to be constructed. It was an experience like something that you never get to experience again. Something that uh, will last a lifetime for a lot of generations to come. This is a small, select group of individuals doing something that none of them had ever really done before. When you had to take what's on the plan and put it actually into a physical part to, to, come, to do the building, sometimes we'd have to change this and we'd have to change that. To fit everything together, you had to you had to cut with a chainsaw, and you, you'd have to take chi hammer to chisel and, and drive chunks out to, to make it work and make it fit. And you took off too much, and you know there was no putting it back. Long before you could see the walls really going up, there was this uh, sense of accomplishment, this good feeling about, hey, we're getting we're really getting better, we're getting more efficient, we're much smoother. The first summer beam was hewed at my work shed by Dr. Rourke and I and took several days to hew the notches in each side of the summer beam. The summer beams are the main biggest beams in the fort. They measure 16 inches wide, 20 inches deep, and about 22 feet long. They support the fort. A lot of the measuring and and marking of the materials was, was really difficult because of the shape and the, the untrueness of it, but I think we did, we did pretty good considering. It was a lot of fun. It was a, definitely a challenge. I, I found it to be a, both a, a physical and intellectual challenge, every aspect of it. There was always something different. Every day was, every week was different. Despite the enormous size of the material, there was the precision with which you wanted to have the logs go together. There was always that effort to, to make it better, to do it quicker, to make it, you know, make it fit better. From the time we would get a log until that log could be utilized at Fort Dobbs often was at least two weeks. Center beams were 16 inch by 22 inch by 22 feet long. So that was a challenge. The center beams are probably around 3,500 pounds. The slabbing was a key process. What the slabber is, is a, 
horizontal 76 inch chainsaw that's mounted on a trolley. So with the size of the logs being as large as they were, we couldn't or didn't want to take a chance on handling them on the forks for fear of rolling. So we strapped these logs to each fork and lifted it onto the slab bed. At that point, we would take a slab off the top, lift the log off, turn it over, put it back on, take a slab off the bottom. We helping one another. He's guiding me for that side, and I'm guiding me for this side, and it, it gets, it, it's, it's pretty challenging. There's some, some cuts I made, oh, it make me smile, and some I said, mm, I wish we had enough of lumber, we'd cut that again. <laughs> After we got past the first floor, I think it, we figured out how it was going, so it was just a, the process after that. I think I hauled two or three loads out of Alexander County. You can find something to make these 8 by 12s and some of the 12 to us. 20 by 16 by 20s and 16 by 6. It takes a big dog on a tree to finish out square to, you know, a, lo a log timber that size. The tools I use are over 100 years old. People, when they came over here, that's what they used to square the logs up for the log homes. They started out, well, they didn't have sawmills back then. They had a, what they call a pit saw. One man was underground, one was up on a scaffold, and they'd saw it up and down. That was your early sawmill. Then they started uh, busting the logs and squaring them up with the foot ass, and that's where you get the look of the four. And they would take a broad axe and do what they call curfing, and then they'd take the foot ass and jerk the chips out. That's where you get the chop marks in the logs. I've been working at it for uh, 33 years. It's lost art. I'm glad I had part in the fort. I left my little piece of history, I guess. A lot of times you would have to sort of decide, well, what are we going to need next? Or when are we going to be ready for flooring? Or what are we going to do about this? And so I think the logistics of, of trying to come up with 650 oak logs and have them carefully prepared and hewed and have them ready and then have all the other material you need, the beams and the joist and the flooring, everything dry and ready to use when you need it. I think that was probably the biggest hurdle uh, because there was never an assurance of a constant supply of the right size logs. Okay, it had been a year since I had framed a hip roof. It went on my memory and trial and error and it was pretty, it was challenging. And to work with that size of timbers, I had, you know, been used to working with two by twelves or tens or eights or whatever. I'm just glad I could contribute as much as I did. The roof is the most unique part of it. I think the the rafters in the roof, different cuts and stuff. Brian did a, a great job with figuring all that out. When we started the fort, I was very skeptical about whether it would ever get finished in my lifetime. And to complete it as quickly as it was done is amazing in all respects. I think the fort is going to be an enormous asset for the community. I think when you look at the timeline for Fort Dobbs and you realize that 263 years after it was built initially, that the site was barren for 250 years and then to actually be able to participate in it and to see the fort sort of rise and have this big commanding presence in the bend of Fourth Creek as people had envisioned and dreamed of for the last hundred years or so, is it, you have to consider yourself very lucky to have been able to, to, to be a part of it.